what basically has happened in Jamar is that all these people forever have been manipulating the stock market and making a lot of money doing it. Wall Street has always been known as a place of controversy, filled with reckless partying and lavish spending, with billions being fueled into Wall Street firms every year. Whether stocks are soaring or crashing, it's no surprise that these firms make a ton. But brewing in the shadows of Wall Street, an online community built on the premise of treating Wall Street as a casino threatens to ruin it all. You've probably heard of Wall Street bets by now. In case you haven't, these are just a few highlights of what Wall Street bets has managed to do in the past few weeks. You're probably asking yourself, how did this all happen? How did they manage to do it? The short answer is, it's complicated. I don't even know if there are foreign powers at work here. Part 1. In late 2011, Occupy Wall Street was started to protest against income inequality and the bailouts that banks received from the financial crisis. Around the same time that the Occupy Wall Street movement began to pick up steam, Jamie Rogozinski, an IT consultant in Mexico, was in the midst of an even more heated argument. An online debate between him and other investors was brewing. Jamie was on Reddit, posting about high-risk options trading, but was facing dismissal by many of the members who valued traditional investing and viewed his trading strategies as too risky. Beginning to be fed up with the constant dismissal, Jamie, who goes by the Reddit username Jartek, decided to create a new forum centered around an alternate investment style focused on trading high-risk stock options. On January the 31st of 2012, Jamie would officially create the Wall Street Bets subreddit. Truly a historical moment. Although the rage surrounding Occupy Wall Street began to fall apart as people moved on back to their normal lives and other news stories, what Jartek started began to gain ground, but not in the way you would expect it to. Part 2 Wall Street Bets was originally started to be a subreddit for sophisticated investors to discuss high-risk and aggressive trading strategies, but quickly changed to being something much more different than Jartek envisioned. While the memes range from a French-Canadian dressed in a wolf mask live-streaming himself losing his million-dollar inheritance all the way to the infinite money glitch and control the narrative, there has been no shortage of memes on the Wall Street Bets subreddit. These legendary moments gave Wall Street Bets mainstream coverage they never had seen before. With this influx of new users, Jartek, the original founder of Wall Street Bets, saw a perfect opportunity to monetize the subreddit through a book, course, and even an in-person tournament. However, the rest of the subreddit and moderators did not appreciate Jartek using the forum for personal gain in selling his stock trading course. So, the moderators contacted Reddit, and Jartek was banned just like that. Going back a few years, in 2014, a successful hedge fund manager had just left SAC Capital to start his own hedge fund, Melvin Capital. SAC Capital had been ordered to shut down in 2013 by the SEC and had to pay a $135 million settlement for insider trading. In its first full year of operation, Melvin Capital had returned 47%, making it the second highest performing fund. The fund was off to a great start. After the banning of Jartek, the memes would continue throughout 2020 as Wall Street bets grew in size to over 1 million members. At the same time, during the summer of 2020, Melvin Capital saw a lot of success in their investments in Alibaba and other tech stocks, alongside their short bet on the demise of GameStop. Melvin Capital's founder, ended up buying two adjacent houses in Miami Beach for $44 million. Life was good for the company. And best of all, GameStop had just announced it would be closing up to 450 stores by the end of the year. While small businesses were dying, Melvin Capital was now worth $12.5 billion. 
everything seemed to be going good. But just as things were picking up for Melvin Capital, news would hit that would change everything. Part 3 In the fall of 2020, everything changed for GameStop. When Ryan Cohen, the founder of Chewy, a wildly successful e-commerce company announced he would be buying 13% of GameStop, shares immediately jumped up 17%. Starting 2020 at $29, Chewy saw its stock go up 300% in one year, making many people see it as a wild success. Ryan Cohen also announced he and two other e-commerce veterans would be appointed to the board of GameStop. This caught the attention of many people on Wall Street Bets. During this same time, one user, who goes by the username Deep Effing Value, had been consistently posting his significant gains on GameStop daily. Since February 2020, he had managed to turn $50,000 to $3 million by January the 11th. Seeing daily post updates with his massive gains alongside the fact the founder of Chewy was heavily invested in rebuilding GameStop and learning about the Volkswagen short seller squeeze in 2008, this created the perfect storm. Many people on Wall Street Bets began to buy up GameStop stock in droves. By the end of Friday, GameStop was already up to $35, over 10 times higher than its low of $2 back in April. As GameStop began to gain momentum, many notable figures began talking about it. Chamath, Dave Portnoy, and Elon Musk, among others, began to talk about GameStop, and once the mainstream picked it up, it was all over. Every single news outlet and person was talking about GameStop. Being the original founder, Jartek even came back to speak on the subreddit's behalf to the media, which upset the mods who had banned him just a year ago. It was all anyone was talking about, and GameStop stock was rising upwards of 50% every single day. When other short sellers like Citron Research saw this momentum, they publicly announced that they had closed out their short positions in GameStop. But things were different for Melvin Capital. They stayed silent through it all, and things were looking even worse for them. People familiar with the fund said it had already lost 30% in the first three weeks of January alone. Melvin Capital did not give up, though. Going back to some of his past connections, the founder of Melvin Capital was able to receive a $2.75 billion injection into his firm from Ken Griffin at Citadel and Stephen Cohen at Point72. Wall Street Bets members retaliated by running a worldwide guerrilla marketing campaign. Members from around the world began running billboards in different cities and flying signs in the sky promoting GameStop and the community. It would be the beginning of a weeks-long battle between Reddit investors and the hedge funds, a battle that would have many ups and downs and ultimately leave many fallen soldiers behind. At its peak, GameStop shares were $483, but in the end, after the one week of mania, GameStop opened on Monday, down over 30%. Throughout the next week, shares began to fall in whirlwind fashion, down over 80% from its all-time high. And just like that, the battle was over. The hedge funds had won. Many trading platforms and hedge funds have been accused of market manipulation for not allowing the purchase of GameStop shares for retail investors. Later this month, the co-founder and CEO of Robinhood, Vlad Tenev, will be testifying in front of Congress for the company's role in limiting the buying of GameStop for several days when it was the most talked about and traded stock on the entire stock market. It will be interesting to see if they face any repercussions moving forward, given they locked retail traders out of trading, while hedge funds were able to freely trade the stock as they saw fit. So I mean, let's say I were, uh, I were short. What I would do is I would hit a lot of guys with rim,
Now you can't foment. That's a violation of, of ferment. Yeah, you, you can't foment. foment. You can't create a yourself an impression that a stock's down. But you do it anyway because the SEC doesn't right. understand it. So you, I mean, it's that's the only sense that I would say this is illegal. But a, a hedge fund that's not up a lot really has to do a lot now to save itself. So. Um, well, Oh, by the way, no one else in the world would ever admit that, but I can care. That's right, and you can say that here. I can't, I'm not going to say it on TV. <laughs> um. Unfortunately, Deep Effing Value, who also goes by Keith, may face legal problems going forward for potential violations of federal rules governing brokers' communications with the public, according to securities lawyers. While Keith's position peaked at $46 million, it went down to $22 million, when he last stopped posting daily updates regarding his position. We can only speculate that his decision had to do with the SEC investigation. When Keith chooses to sell his final shares and options remain unknown, but currently he already has sold for $13 million in cash and has $4.6 million left in shares and $3.9 million left in call options. Many other Wall Street Bets members haven't been as lucky as Keith. As for the future of GameStop, the company is unlikely to go bankrupt anytime soon. While the release of the new Xbox and PlayStation and the current lockdowns will push more gamers to buying their video games digitally, there will always be a group of gamers who prefer to purchase the physical copy of their games and shop in person. Moving forward, it will be important that GameStop continues to find balance between their retail stores and growing out their e-commerce reach. Only time will tell where this puts GameStop 10 years from now. And there you have it, the story of Reddit versus the hedge funds. In the words of Michael Burry, there won't ever be another GME. Nothing else is close to as shorted as GameStop, with a small microcap and so hated, ignored, and dismissed prior to the big short squeeze. It was a uniquely perfect setup, much like the big short in 2008. Going forward, just like movements before it, something else will likely come up and sweep people's attention away from it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. And I'll see you guys next time.